Hello, my name is Simon and I am an exchange student at UCSD, but usually studying computer science in Scotland. And together with Owen, he is a master student at UCSD, we will show you today our project IoT Linear Integrate and Fire for this quarter. So, what is the project about? Well, nowadays, wireless communication is everywhere. Whether you are browsing the internet on your phone, or listening to the radio in your car, or taking a phone call, in all those cases, you will use wireless communication. And whenever you do use wireless communication, you're also making use of a shared medium, the air. And it can actually get quite crowded there because there are so many services using the same medium. And that's where our project comes in because it is very important to make best use of all the available frequencies. And our goal was to make a model for modulation classification. That means we are helping to build a device which can receive radio signals and then recognize which type of signal it is. And it recognizes the type of the signal based on modulation. And modulation again is the process of embedding the information, so the data, into the radio signal. And to achieve this, we are making use of something called a spiking neural network. And the spiking neural network is quite a new system that is based on so-called linear integrated fire neurons. And those are inspired by actual biological neurons that are functioning in a similar way as in our brain or nervous system. And now Owen will tell you more about the specifics of a spiking neural network. Yeah, so we all know about regular neural networks where you basically optimize a parameterized function to perform some mapping. And in the easy setting, which we can actually apply to our project, you can optimize the network by exposing it to a set of known input and output examples. So that could be images with corresponding labels of duck or non-duck, or in our case, radio signals and modulation class labels. Either way, the network will adapt based on the data that it receives. We get the radio signals from a data set called Radio ML, which contains 2 million signals with their associated modulation classes. And the signals are represented as IQ samples over time, which we convert into images to feed as input to the network. And the twist to our network is that it's going to be a spiking neural network, which is a variant of a neural network that takes and produces spikes over time and has a more complex neuron model which allows it to do so. The problem is that spikes over time are not differentiable, so traditional gradient-based training methods don't work without modification, and the current training methods are not as powerful. But one big advantage of a spiking network is that it can be run more efficiently on specialized hardware that allows it to only process the spikes. So here you can see a high-level overview of what the spiking neural network does. On the left is our incoming radio signal, and it's processed one data point at a time by the spiking neural network. At each time step, we turn the input IQ data into an image, give it to the network, and the network predicts a class label which is the number that you see to the right. And then, after it's gotten the whole signal, it chooses the modulation class that it predicted most often. Now if we look at the results. Using a 3-layer SNN, we were able to get an accuracy of around 50 to 55% on the full 24 modulation classes of the Radio ML dataset. For only 10 classes, the performance increases to around 70 to 75%, but this is still lower than the 95 to 98% that the best regular neural networks can achieve. Using a technique called quantization, we were able to reduce the memory requirement for static parameters by 75% and for runtime parameters by 25% while accepting a drop in accuracy of around 1.5%. In conclusion, this means that the performance of our SNN is still significantly lower than what can be achieved using regular neural networks. We think this is at least in part due to the less developed training methods available for spiking neural networks. And future experiments could be done using an alternative training method based on the concept of genetic algorithms.